While I was brainstorming ideas for the next studio, I came across this awards collection called Loading Animations. That's when I stumbled upon this really cool site with a stunning page reveal animation. It actually won site of the day last year in October, and what caught my eye was this intro animation they used. It was clean and super well executed. The way the text animates on top of the overlay, followed by the entire overlay along with the text splitting apart to reveal the page behind, really stood out to me. We haven't done anything like this on the channel before, so I thought it would be interesting to break it down and give it a try. After a few hours of experimenting, I was able to recreate a very similar concept just using GSEP timeline and the split text plugin. As you can see, I've included all the key animations from that original site just with different copy and visuals. In this video, I'll walk you through how you can create this kind of landing page reveal animation using simple HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and GSAP. If you like my work, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me grow the channel and reach more people. And if you want to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar micro projects along with a new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. Let's start by setting up the structure. First, we'll define an overlay and call it the preloader. Inside this, I'll add two key elements. The first is the intro title. This is the main text that animates in at the beginning. It then animates out, leaving behind just the first letter. Next, we have the outro title. This is the text that appears after the full intro text fades out. For both of these, I'm using H1 tags. Now, if you noticed in the demo, there is a moment where the OL splits from the middle, including the text, and then animates out with the top half moving upward and the bottom half sliding downward. To create that split effect, we'll need a second overlay, this one called split overlay, with the exact same text elements duplicated. This allows us to apply clip path on both. We can hide the bottom half of the first one and the top half of the second one, then animate them out in opposite directions. There may be other ways to achieve this, but this is the approach I went with and it worked well. Next, we'll add another layer for the tags, those small text blocks that appear on the overlay during the animation. I'll wrap each one in a div with the class name of tag and inside each, I'm placing a paragraph tag for the text. Each tag gets a unique class so we can position them around the screen later with CSS. Now let's move on to the actual website content. I'll add a container div that holds everything. Inside, we'll start with a simple navbar and a footer. I'm using paragraph elements for now just for easier styling, but you can replace them with the actual anchor links based on your requirements. Next is the hero image which will sit in the background. And finally, we have a card div in the center of the screen. Inside that, I have placed an H1 tag. This is the white card you saw in the demo. That's it for the HTML setup. Let's move on to styling now. First, I'm importing a Google font called DMSense to give the entire design a clean modern typeface. Then, I'll add some base styles to reset default margins and paddings and make sure the layout behaves consistently. Next, I'll apply font family to the body to keep the typography uniform across the project. Then, I'll style the images so that they allows field their containers and crop nicely without distortion using object fit. Now for the headings, I'll make them uppercase, increase the font size and give them a bold appearance. For the paragraph text, I'll also keep everything uppercase and slightly reduce the size and weight. After that, we'll style the three main overlays, the preloader, the split overlay and the tags overlay. I'll position all of them to cover the entire screen and fix them in place. Both the preloader and the split overlay will have a dark background with white text matching the look we saw in the demo. I'll also control the stacking order using Z-index, placing the preloader and the tags overlay on top and then split overlay at the bottom. Now for the intro title, I'll position it right at the center of the screen and align the text in the middle. Now for the outro title, this one also sits in the center but I've pushed it slightly to the right. The reason for this is important. This title needs to appear directly above the second word in the intro title because if you look at the demo, that's where it will animate in from, right after that second word animates out. So you need to align it carefully so the transition looks seamless. Depending on how many words or how long your intro title is, you might need to adjust the spacing slightly to get the alignment just right. Next, I'll move on to styling the tags, the small text blocks you saw floating on the overlay. 
Each tag is absolutely positioned in a different part of the screen and styled with a subtle grey color to make them feel more graphic elements than the primary content. After that, I'll set up the container for the main site content. Its position relatively takes up the full screen and is laid out using Flexbox to distribute the navbar and footer vertically. I've also applied a clip path to this container so we can fully hide it at the start and then reveal it during the animation. Next, I'll style the hero image inside the container. I'm absolutely positioning it so that it fills the entire screen behind all the content. Then we move on to the navigation and footer. We have already placed the navbar and footer at the top and bottom using the flex box. Both of these are positioned relatively and stretched across the full width of the screen. I am using Flexbox here to space out the content evenly, putting one item on the left and one on the right just like you saw in the demo. The text is styled in white to stand out against the dark background and I have bumped up the Z index to make sure they stay visible on top of everything else. For the logo inside the navigation, I have added a slightly bolder font weight and increased the size just a bit. Now let's talk about the card. I am positioning it right at the center of the screen and using transforms to align it both vertically and horizontally. It takes up a good portion of the screen and acts as the main content highlight once the landing page loads. Inside the card, we have placed a large heading element. It's centered both in layout and alignment to create a clean minimal visual punch. The card also uses a clip path which will animate later to make it appear from nothing into full view just like we saw in the final reveal of the demo. Next, I'll add the styles we'll need for animating the text characters later using JavaScript. We are going to split our text into individual spans wrapped inside divs with the class names like character and word. We'll do this dynamically with JavaScript, but here we are preparing the CSS that will control how those animations behave. So for each character span, I am setting them to inline block and placing them slightly off screen along with Y axis to start. This way, we can animate them upward or downward into view later using GSAP. Then, for the wrapper divs around each character, the ones with the character class, I am giving them overflow hidden. This creates a masking effect so that only the part of the span that slides into the box becomes visible. Without this, the animation would just float in without a proper reveal. I am applying the same logic for the intro title, the outro title and the card text since all three will be animated in the same way. For the intro and outro title specifically, I am adding a bit of top margin. You can ignore this part if you are using a different font. And for the very first character of the intro title, I am setting the transform origin to the top left. Then finally, I'll add some responsive tweaks. On smaller screens, I'll reduce font sizes, shift the outro title slightly closer to the center, and resize the card so everything stays balanced and readable across devices. That wraps up the CSS setup. Next, we'll move on to the JavaScript part where we'll actually split the text into spans and bring all these animations to life using GSAP. At the top, I'm importing GSAP along with two plugins, custom ease and split text. We'll use these to control the timing and character-based animations throughout the intro. Once the document is fully loaded, I register both plugins with GSAP so they're ready to use. Then I define a custom ease function called hop. This will give all our animations that smooth easing motion. Next, I am setting up a utility function called split text elements. This function helps us easily split any selected text element into words and characters depending on what we need. So here is how it works. We pass in a CSS selector, specify whether we want to split it by words, characters or both and optionally flag whether we want to tag the first character differently. Inside the function, I select all the elements matching that selector. Then, I create a new split text instance on each element and apply custom class names to the generated words and characters. If we are working with characters, I go one step further, I loop through each character, grab its content and wrap it inside a span element. This is essential for the vertical reveal animation we'll do later using translate Y. And if the add first character flag is set to true, I'll mark the first character with a special class. This helps us apply a different transform or animation only to that specific character like we did in the demo where the first letter hangs around a bit longer. Then I call this function on each element we want to split, first on the intro title where we split both words and characters and mark the first character. Then on the outro title which only needs word and character splitting, I also split the tags but here I only split by words since we animate them one word at a time. And finally the card title again splitting by words and characters. That wraps up the setup for the text splitting. Next, 
we'll move on to setting initial states for our elements before starting the timeline animation. I'll drop in some initial positioning for the split overlay text elements, but before that, I'm checking if the current screen is mobile sized or not using a simple condition. This way, we can apply different values based on whether we are on desktop or mobile. You will see this logic used throughout the setup. Now, remember how I mentioned that we are using a duplicate overlay called split overlay to create the split animation? This block of code is all about setting that up. But instead of animating anything on this duplicate layer, what I've done is simply position the text exactly where it needs to be once the preloader animation finishes. Here is what I'm doing. First, I'm setting the Y transform of the first character from the intro title and all the characters of the outro title to zero so they are already in their visible state. Then I position the first character of the intro title with some X and Y offsets, scale it down slightly and increase its font weight. This mimics exactly how it looks after the intro animation is done. I also adjust the positioning and font size of the outro character so that they line up correctly with the final animation state. I know these values, the X, Y, scale and font sizes might look a bit odd at first, but I landed on them after a bit of trial and error. I kept tweaking the transforms until the characters looked centered and symmetrical just like you saw in the final state of the animation in the demo. So most likely you'll end up changing the text like rewriting the title or adjusting the number of words. You'll definitely want to play around these values again to make sure everything still looks properly aligned. The idea here is not to animate the split overlay, it's just there to match the final visual of the preloader. That way, once we clip and hide the preloader, this version is already in place and ready to move during the split animation. In the next part, I'll show you how we actually animate the preloader text and tags using a GSAP timeline and how we move into split transition from there. First, I'll create a GSAP timeline with our custom ease called hop. This gives everything that smooth easing we talked about earlier. I also grab all the tag elements and convert them into an array using GSAP's utility function. This makes it easier to loop through them and animate each one with a slight delay. Then, I begin the timeline by animating each text text, bringing in the words into view from above, one at a time, staggered slightly based on their index. This is what creates that staggered entrance for the text on the preloader. Then we move on to the intro title animation. I animate each character of the intro title into view from above, using a stagger for that flowing wave-like effect. After a pause, I animate all the characters except the first one back down and out of view. This makes room for the outro title to take over. Next, I bring in the outro title characters, animating them downward in a similar fashion, again with a slightly different stagger. Then, I animate the first character of the intro title, shifting it horizontally to its final position on the right. At the same time, I also shift the outro characters slightly left. Next, I'll animate both the intro title and outro title's final properties like font size, weight, scale and position. You'll notice this matches what we have already preset in the split overlay. This is the same place I manually positioned it for the split overlay text elements earlier. This mimics the movement in the demo where both text elements comes near towards the center and settle into their split state positions. And here is the key part. As soon as these final movements finish, I immediately clip the preloader so its bottom half is hidden. And I clip the split overlay so its top half is hidden. This sets us up for the next move where both layers will slide apart and create that seamless split. At the same time, I also start reveling the container underneath by animating its clip part slightly open so we can see just a silver of the main page content in between the split. Next, I animate the tags out, sliding each one back down the same way they came in. This clears up the screen for the next transition. And now comes the big move, the actual split animation. Here, I animate both the preloader and the split overlay vertically in opposite directions, one moving up and one moving down. Because we have already clipped each half, it creates that clean tearing effect you saw in the demo. As that happens, I expand the container's clip path fully so the entire main page content becomes visible underneath. Then I animate this entire card. At first, the card is completely hidden using clip path and then it slides open from the middle outward. Finally, I animate the characters inside the card title one by one 
upward into view just like we did with the intro text earlier. And that completes the entire reveal sequence. The timing, stagger and positioning are carefully tuned to match the energy of the original reference site while keeping it clean and smooth. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.